have I got a game for you guys. Alright, so playing against C Nug Zero Zero. Sweet. I guess that's Mameoplasm Avatar. And today we're back on Mono Green. Uh, I've been tweaking the deck a little bit. Uh only made two changes since the last one. I added in Terastodon. Uh, I felt like it was it, it's kinda necessary in mono green because this deck can just ramp up like crazy. I don't have the natural order yet. Uh that will be added in eventually. But uh this list was built off dual commander lists where natural order is banned, so that's why it wasn't on my radar originally as something spicy to get. So I have a little slow hand. Uh, rampant growth on turn two, turn three I should have four mana. So not quite at Seedborn, but if I go Yisan into untapped draw, play Seedborn, I should be taking over the game relatively quickly. Now playing against Thada Adele, Acquisitor. Uh, this hand might be a little slow against other mono blue commanders, but Thada tends to play uh, some janky cards in it. So, uh, I'm not terribly worried. Uh, so this is definitely a keep for me. Thought Adele, I believe they kept their hand as well. And yep, so here we go. I lost the die roll, unfortunately. Winning the die roll would have been huge here, especially because I'm not, I don't have turn to a Yisan like this deck once. So, it would have been nice to have Yisan before their turn three, effectively. But it's not going to be the case. All right, Acidic Slime. Not going to do anything with that yet. We're just going to go Orn Reef Pass. Get the tap land out of the way. Ooh, Acid Boss. Now that's something I can do on four. And a card that you guys have not seen me play yet. Destroy target land. Search your library for a forest card. Put that card in the battlefield. Tap and then shove your library. So it's uh, Stone Rain plus Rampant Growth. It's uh, very cost effective because Rampant Growth costs two, as you can see here and then I'm effectively destroying a land for a Rampant Growth. So I will of course Rampant Growth right here, deal with one of these things, get my beautiful forests, and my opponent plays a third island and just passes. And I gotta assume he's got counter magic, assuming that I'm gonna be playing Yi Sun next turn. So that is the one thing I'm not going to do. Because I'd just be throwing away Yisan and increasing his cost to 5 to get a counter out of his hand. Whereas I can get that counter out without having to do anything else. So I'm going to play a land and run out my only 4 drop, uh, Muwenvoli Acid Moss. Take out one of these islands. And some of you guys may think it's a scumbaggy move to play a land destruction in the deck. I think I have 4 different effects, not counting Terastodon, that destroy lands. Any, any lands, there's Thermokarst. Winter's Grasp, um, Moonvoli Acid Moss, and there's one more. Uh, name escapes me at the moment. So, some of you may say, say it's a scumbaggy move, but it's really how Green Tempo has to keep uh, can keep pace, uh, and it's a great way to create uh, effects that are must counter that are not my commander. So I'm going to dissolve him because. He can't let Acid Moss resolve. It's a two two mana swing. He goes down to two, uh, and then up to three on his turn if he has a land, and I go from four to five. So I would it, effectively this cre generates a Salt Ring by putting him two mana beneath me. Well, at that point because I've rampant growth once. So let's pause. All right. So uh, he untaps, plays Thassa, God of the Sea. Uh, generally pretty good against green, except I have good removal in my deck for it. Unravel the Aether, I'm, I'm going to fire that off now, and luckily I drew a 2-drop. My, my hope there was to draw either a 2-drop or a land, because if I drew a land, I could unravel the Aether, the Thassa. If he has a counter, he might protect it, and then I could play the land and play Yisan immediately. Uh, if he didn't counter it, I could... Uh, either try to run the Yisan out or sit on Beast within. Uh, but I drew the two drops, so to Juru Preserver. Uh, it's just an elf that prevents them from making uh, me sacrifice things. Pretty useful in a lot of different metas. It's one of the random toolboxes that you can get with the Yisan. 
So we're, we're going to be mana efficient, drop, play everything out. I really want to draw this 5, because now uh, he's advancing past me in mana. He's at 5, and I'm down to 4. So that's not good. And he plays Tezzeret. Oh my god. And I'm, a, I'm expecting something like Winter Orb or Videlkin Shackles, and I'm going to have to spend this Beast Within on it. Almost immediately, but he gets Winter Orb. I'm not Beast Within anything for a while. But the lack of Artifact Ramp that he's played so far tends to make me think that it's not Orb. So minus three, so I'm thinking it's got to be Shackles, right? Quicksilver Fountain. So he's playing a five mana Quicksilver Fountain because my preser he knows the preser Preserver will kill Tezzeret. Beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts a Flood Counter on target non-island land he or she controls of his or her choice. That land is in an island for as long as it has a Flood Counter on it. Beginning of each end step, if all lands on the battlefield are islands, remove all Flood Counters from them. So, pretty interesting card. I assume it's to give to make sure that you get Island Walk with Bata Adele. So, I'm just going to choose my non-basic at this point. I'm more worried about choosing a basic and then running out of green because uh, he can waste my Orin Reef. The second ability is very rarely relevant. It's just a strict upgrade to a forest most of the time. So Orin Reef is the choice there. And it's going to come back to bite me in a moment. So I draw Evolutionary Leap. It's not bad. Uh, I decide to just deploy Yisan this turn, I believe. Get in, kill Tezzeret, and then deploy the Yisan. There we go. So turn 6 Yisan, not very exciting. But uh, he is dictating the pace of this game, and my lack of uh, mana is the real limiting factor. Gauntlet of Power. So he's obviously going to choose blue, but the interaction here is interesting. Because I will flood one of my forests, it will become an island. Gauntlet of Power says whenever a basic land is tapped for mana of the chosen color, it adds one mana. So I will tap my far my forest, which is a basic land, for blue because of the Quicksilver Fountain, and it will give me two blue. So he actually ramped me by one by playing that. I I think this was not in his best interest here. I think he should have run out Thada there instead of giving me additional mana. And I draw the island just to or the soon-to-be island, the forest, so used to playing blue guys. Uh, draw the forest, so I would have had one of my five drops. I could play Garrick this turn and m immediately minus three Garrick to drop in Seedborn Muse, which might be spicy, but I decide to hold on to the Garrick for a while. It's possible that I should have played Garrick and that might have been the correct play, seeing how he has no pressure right now, but I really want to get Seedborn out and Garrick uh, is going to be better later when I have higher drops to put into play. And because I'm going to get a full untap, I might as well get in for four. And there we go. Alright, so Reliquary Tower, that'll be flooded next turn most likely. And here comes Thada. And it w probably would have been in his better interest to play Thada last turn. Um, I would have had to tap out for Seaborn Muse. I wouldn't have been able to do the Garrick play if he had done that. Um, and then play Gauntlet this turn. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And he still would have had four mana open after Gauntlet. Now I see the play. He wanted to be able to deploy Glenelandra. So I'm going to destroy the Gauntlet. I just don't really want him to have that much mana. I can keep pace with the fountain for a while, and I make a huge blunder in a moment. There we go, beast. So Glenelandra. Uh, I fired that off, obviously, because he would counter the beast within on his mana doubler. It also reduces the power of these creatures. So here is my massive blunder, although it, it does end up doing well. Event. So I look at my one drops and I'm like, all right, well, I can get these flood counters off of my lands if I get Quarian Ranger, which lets me bounce my forest cards. The thing about Quarian Ranger is it bounces a land with the type forest, not a land with the name forest. So 
I get my query ranger, and I'm all set to use it on my turn. I flood an, uh, and create a new island. I tap my mana, and so I, I look at this, and the obvious choice is Priest of Titania. I'm going to be kneecapped on mana for a while, so this is guaranteeing that I have green mana, and he's just giving, turning all of my lands into islands. That's fine at this point, but I think I'm going to try to get rid of it here with Acidic Slime. And I try to untap, and it doesn't work. Alright, so I bounce a regular forest. And I go out for a 4 drop. Right, or a 3 drop. And I get the Reclamation Sage. Kill the Fountain. And this is mostly getting an additional elf into play for my priest. I, I'm going to accept that he's he's going to have get all of my lands to become islands if I don't. And I really don't want to give him that much time with this. Uh, it would be only two turns away, assuming I don't play any lands. And then I could go get this, or destroy that with Acidic Slime. But I really wanted to go after that now. I probably should have gotten the Elvish Arch Druid. I've made blunders this game to be sure. And here I make a huge mistake. I don't put a stop on his uh, begin combat step because I can go get a 4. I believe it's a 4 in my deck. So he attacks. I'll, I'll show you when I go into the deck. And I decide not to do anything. I, take, I took a look at the um, deck list to see if I could get anything. And I fully expect him to be getting duplicate here to try to destroy Yisan. And sure enough, duplicate. So that's alright, that'll tap him out. Keep him from doing anything else. So duplicate comes in. He targets Yisan. I go for four. And at his beginning of combat, I could have gone and gotten Timbermare, which taps all cr other creatures besides itself, and tapped down his team to keep Duplicant from coming into play that turn. It's possible that would have been the right play, but Team or Sabretooth is so integral to this combo, I decide to get Sabretooth here. And now I have two mana open, so I'll just bounce the sun to my hand to give the Sabretooth indestructible and keep it from gaining a two, ma two commander tax basically. Alright, so Deglamour comes off the top. Well I definitely do not want to Deglamour the duplicate. The one time these naturalizes are worse than actual naturalize because it just means he's going to be able to Adel the duplicate again and probably my priest, which would be the correct play, or the Sabretooth. Because Sabretooth cannot bounce itself. So, I count my mana. I go with Evolutionary Leap. I'm trying to bait out a Glenelandra activation, because I know he's going to have to counter Garrick. Four, five, six. Here comes Garrick, and sure enough, he, he can't let Garrick sit and play he can't even let me get one activation off it if he can avoid it. So that's down one. We're going to bounce a forest and untap my priest, replay the forest, run out Yisan, and Wirewood Symbiote. Just to be mana efficient, I have exactly two open. If he has some shenanigans, I can protect with uh, my Sabretooth. Okay, so I see the opportunity to use the symbiote, bounce the elf, untap the priest, and replay my sage to deal with this duplicate here. And I'm t I'm tapped out with my teamer saber tooth dodge protection. So leap, I I don't think I use at all this game. It was mostly just bait for the Glenelandra, hoping he would take it, but. Oh well. The deck has more than enough mana at this point that I can afford to just throw away two mana on random bait. He's going to go in, and I look at the deck, and I assume he's going to be getting... He has more, more than enough mana, but he has a 1-1 one, one one now. 
So I, I'm thinking it's going to be Skull Clamp. And Skull Clamp. Well, I don't mind the glamouring that after he spends two mana trying to draw cards off Glen with the Glenelandra. I'm only time walking the Thada Adele, but I'm effectively time walking him. And Elixir of Immortality. It's such a non draw. Okay. I'll clear these off. Sorry, I'm sure some of you have been bought. Uh, having fits that I've been leaving them on the board. Alright, so do my mana count, use Isan, going to get a two, and or going to get a, a one because uh, he was just replayed last turn. And here the decision is obvious. I'm gonna get the Sylvan Safekeeper, one of the new additions to the deck. You'll actually get to see both of the new additions. So this is just insurance to protect Isan in case something goes on. I also have the ability to sacrifice all of my islands in response to him attacking with Thada Adele, and then block Thada with something like my Sabretooth or my Seedborn Muse, and kill Thada Adele for the cost of sacrificing three lands. Uh, random niche play that I can get rid of all my islands at instant speed. Uh, I decide to bounce forest, use the priest, get an additional six. Bounce the elves, untap the Yisan, replay elves, Yisan for two, and I believe my choice here is the Scrib Ranger, the Quirion Ranger number two. So I'm just going to Yisan myself up to three. He's going to crack Elixir in response, so I'm assuming he wants to be able to F8 at this point because uh, F8 will allow him to ignore everything I'm doing unless I play a non-creature spell, and Glenelandra could be activated. So I have a lot of choices here. Uh, it's possible to get Heartwood Storyteller, knowing that he's going to be replaying, actually casting Skull Clamp out of my deck. Dose in the Falling Leaf to keep him from casting things during my turn. Archdruid for a lot of mana. Eternal Witness. Azuri. Fierce Empath. Corruptor has no targets, and Wood Elves is just mana. And at this point, I go with the Wood Elves. I'm I'm trading off lands to get Yisun activation, so I want to make sure that I still have green green in play for some random blowout. And I Acidic Slime, one of his items here, just to get the slime into play, basically. And that slime will keep this beast from ever attacking in. The Sabretooth was doing that by being able to bounce, gain indestructible, and then block the beast to kill it. But slime's the deterrent that I need. And I remember about the Tempermare play here, and I'm trying to set stops. But he jumped through before I could have the stop set. And he gets in again. So that's okay. Alright, so thought it gets in, goes after the skull clamp. At this point I decide I'm I'll go get my four, check what it is, and just get Oracle just to guarantee additional lands now. I could and Dosan is on top of my library. Let's shrink that. We'll keep my library down here. So he gets two, skull clamps the beast, and when he spent mana skull clamping the beast, I felt pretty good. Uh, I know better than to attack into that, and in all honesty, I have an elf bounce right here, and I have a naturalizing elf over here. So skull clamp's no big issue if I can uh, do stuff during my main phase. So I only have one five left in the deck. Acidic slime is one of my other targets. Uh, I'm gonna get the Whisperwood as wrath insurance. Not that blue plays a whole bunch. It could play all his dust, but I have the hard counter to all his dust. And it would be very nice if he played it and my entire board stayed intact. Alright. So. If my library keeps getting big. That's going to be a pain in the butt. Alright, so I see Lignify on top. That'd be good off Thada, but I don't ever intend to draw it. So. To have a bunch of mana, go get my six for Woodland Bellower. And Woodland Bellower triggers 
I flash a land war elf and go get my fierce empath. Oh no, my eternal witness here. Because I'm intending to get duplicate back and deal with Thada to keep Thada from getting other stuff from my deck. So I play. Uh, I bounce the uh, Reclamation Sage, I believe. Yeah, I bounced Re Reclamation Sage. Uh, destroyed the Skull Clamp. Now I'm tapping up, uh, but I use the Wirewood Symbiote to untap the Priest of Titania, play the Rex Sage, and now Duplicant. And now I make a mistake here. I, u I bounce the Duplicant with Teamer Sabertooth, thinking I can get rid of the Beast and get in for a bunch of damage. But Duplicant says non-token, so I play around with that, and I choose not to exile any of my own things. And I bounce the Eternal Witness with my two mana floating, just because it's going to be useful to have that. I get in with things that will not be killed by the Beast, just for a bit more bits of damage. And I manifest the Green Sun Zenith that was on top of my library. Sure enough, there's Lightning Greaves. That'd be, well, that'd be nice to have. I have the combo in play. If you uh, see the combo, I hope you uh, see why Lightning Greaves is so important. But if you don't, that's okay. We'll see. I'll, you'll see it in a few. So he goes for Sword of Feast and Famine, and I think for a sec, oh my god, this can be terrible. But I have a Duplicant, and I have a Colorless Manifested Green Sun Zenith. So I have two colorless things that can block that beast. There we go. Beast in, and I, I think he was he just got some tunnel vision here thinking, alright, well I'll pay five, put the sword in and equip it, and then untap everything, replay Thada, and it'll all be good. And I think he just missed the duplicate. So I don't mind it being my graveyard at all. I have an Eternal Witness that I can continuously rebuy with my Sabretooth. And he plays Days Undoing. Now, this does end the turn, so I have to do all of my Yisan shenanigans now. I think one of the cards that's going to be added to this deck is Yeva Nature's Herald, and you'll see in a sec why. So... I only have one at seven, which is Regal Force. Now, I don't intend to draw a bunch of cards just to have Days Undoing shuffle them back in. If I had Yeva's Na Yeva Nature's Herald in this deck, I could get Regal Force, draw a bunch, hope to draw the Herald, and then cast a whole bunch of green creatures out of my hand, Eternal Witness included, and then Days Undoing getting a new hand is immediately after that. So, I decide to bounce a forest and use on to eight because I needed to get Terastodon. And I'm going to knock out three of his lands. So, new hand. Most important thing in this hand, Lightning Greaves. Nothing else in this hand actually matters in the long run. So, I could strip mine. I'd rather just play two forests. I have a forest on top of my library. That's not going to matter. So I'll go, I'll go through this iteration a couple times just to show you, and then I'm going to jump to the end step. So play land. All right. So here's the play. So I tap Priest of Titania for seven mana, and use two of it to play Lightning Greaves. Now I use Teamer Sabretooth. Use up two of that mana. Go down to five, three. Bounce Priest of Titania. Teamer Sabretooth has Indestructible. I use two of that, play Priest of Titania, and Greaves the Priest of Titania. Titania taps for seven right now. So I bounce it again. Now, so this is costing me four per cycle, but I'm gaining seven per cycle. So I have a net profit of mana for three. Now the if he somehow had blue non-mana removal, I have Sylvan Safekeeper, uh, and I can just try to go off again next turn. Or I could play Elvish Arch Druid that I'm sandbagging, and th it's just a redundant copy of Priest of Titania, effectively, because the same combo will work. 
So go up to nine. And I play Azuri, so now Priest is making eight and costing four per turn for per cycle. So I'm gaining four. I'm gonna make a mana. I think I go up to thirty first. Yeah. So up to thirty. And now I start using uh the Azuri that I played a couple back. I have thirty mana. So let's pump up some. And there's one thing that I want to make sure I do before I actually go to my combat step. And we've seen the card happen go past already. So we're gonna power everything up. I'm just making a lot of mana here and dumping mana into Azuri. Now my you'll notice my clock's getting low. I commented on uh saying I may I'm gonna make infinite mana and then overrun with Azuri. I have more than enough elves in play. You can do it with a single elf that can attack, like my preserver. And there's really nothing they can do about it, especially because I have the safekeeper in hand. So if they try to just... My goal is to get a single elf high enough to... Uh, or just a couple elves high enough to defeat him. And if he does anything to disrupt the elves, I can Sylvan Safekeeper them. Or disrupt the combo once the Isan triggers at 3. And you'll see why 3 is important in a moment. So, I bounce Yisan. Alright. Yisan gets Greaves. I use Greaves. Go get a 1. Do top of my library doesn't matter. Okay. Move the Greaves on a Muse. I uh, use one of my things that isn't the Elf Bounce to untap Yisan. Remember, I have 2 that are Forests. And... If need be, I can replay Scrib Ranger using some of the infinite mana that I have and just bounce another forest uh, to use it again. So I can rebuy Scrib Ranger's use. So I can bounce as many forests as I have effectively. I don't even tap it for mana first. Re equip Yuzan, go for two. I get. Uh, I didn't actually draw, draw survival there. I think I revealed survival off the top and I drew something else. Uh, not that it matters. It doesn't actually bug out. Alright. Untap Yisan. Go get a 3. Dosan the Falling Leaf. Players can only cast spells during their own turns. The nail in the final... The final nail in the proverbial coffin. Let's shrink that. So that is how the Yisan combo goes off. Uh, you effectively need at least 5 mana if you're using Priests of Titania or uh, six mana if you're using Elvish Archdruid. So, because it, you have to replay this particular elf. In Dual Commander, where Rafelos is legal, you can also just have a bunch of forests, so it gives you one additional way to win the combo. But here, without Rafelos, we cannot do that. So, uh, it has to be one of these two. And they're both in the deck because of the r need for redundancy. And we get in for 138 damage after he blocks a couple things that don't trample. And that is the game, down to 2 minutes and 13 seconds. Once the combo actually gets going, uh, you just got to be able to click quickly to get through it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Wow, this is a 28 minute video. Uh, but I wanted to show you a non-bugged version of the combo actually working. Uh, I wasn't able to find any copies of it on YouTube right now, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Share it with anyone that is interested. Dose sounds really the final piece to guarantee that they don't have something like Aetherize. This works in multiplayer as well if people don't understand how Team or Sabretooth uh, is so incredibly powerful in this deck. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one.